Welcome back everybody, Mr. Breeze here. Today we have a Cub Cadet CR30 rear engine lawnmower. This is a Forrest Gump type. We're going to change the engine oil and filter, fuel filter, air filter and spark plug. First you want to warm it up a little bit, not too much. You don't want to burn your hands on the oil or the filter. Um, you want to remove the chute, it should be just two big wing nuts. That will gain you access to the right side where your air filter, oil filter, and fuel filter are conveniently located. A little persuasion on the front here will pop this chute right off. Put that over to the side. Now you also have a safety switch. that keeps you from starting the mower with the chute is off. You can see the blade there, so this is a safety precaution. Um, now we're going to remove the oil cap dipstick. Set that off the side so you get a nice flow when you're draining the engine oil. Clean around the drain plug. You don't want to get any dirt, contaminants, back inside. It's a regular 3 8 extension. If you can get her in the hole there. Don't take it all the way out. Let's get it so it's finger tight. You don't get oil all over till you get ready to pour it out. Now I use a high-tech piece of cardboard here. You can use a Two liter bottle cut up or I think Cub Cadet might even make a uh, special attachment here but I just use this cardboard works pretty good little drain bucket only holds about one and a half quart so like a two quart container low enough to get underneath the deck works fine Get the extension snapped in there good, you don't worry about dropping your drain plug in oil. Let this drain for a while, go have a cold one, cup of coffee. Um, it's always going to continuously drip. You'll never 100% get all the oil out, but once it's done flowing, you just got a small drip. Then you're ready to put the drain plug back in. You're ready to go back together, take your drain plug, clean it up. There's a magnet on the end. If you do get any shavings in your oil, it will stick to that magnet. If you ever drain and get some big pieces, you might want to uh, call your local engine repair shop. I'd put some pipe dope or some Teflon tape on the threads to seal it better. These drain plugs are steel. The engine block is aluminum. They will crack if you over tighten them and if you don't put nothing on them don't change it for a few years back of a time getting it out remember you not want to over tighten this because you can crack the block unless you want a new lawnmower then you can crack it and go buy a new lawnmower Just like that. Now if your chute worked good, you shouldn't have oil all over your deck or your bottom of your engine plate or your garage floor. Use a little brake clean or carburetor cleaner. Spray it out, wipe it out a little bit. Now we move to the right side where we took the chute off. Get an oil filter wrench. You can use a pair of channel locks if you don't have the right size filter wrench. I don't like putting them back on with channel locks because you can crush them. And that will kind of uh, defeat the purpose of how the filter works. That shouldn't be too much in there. It'll drain a little bit. You want to wipe that down good. 
and get ready to put your new filter on. You don't want to put the filter on dry. Uh, the um, seal on it will either crack, it'll come loose, or next time you go to change it, you'll have a heck of a time getting it off. I like to put a thin layer of grease on it. Use some engine oil here. Since I got the bottles right there. Can use lube plate or regular grease, but you always got the oil there. You might as well use that. Get as tight as you can with your hand, and then you want to go no more than a quarter turn with the wrench. Ask your tire to give up the wrench. There you go. Sure, your funnel's wiped out and clean. Holds about 1.3 quarts of oil. I put a little over one in and run it and check it. I use a 1030 semi synthetic. Synthetic blend. I don't use a full synthetic because I change it every year. What kind of defeats the purpose of the synthetic long life? Just throwing your money away. Put your cap back on, put your chute on, and just snap it on just so it covers up the switch. Safety switch on the side I showed you earlier, and let it run 20-30 seconds. Make sure you get all that engine oil up in that filter. If you don't run it, you're not going to get a proper reading, and then you'll probably be low on oil. I bought the oil filter, air filter, fuel filter, spark plug as a kit together online, about 20 bucks. Uh, two quarts of uh, synthetic blend, about 10, 11 bucks. So, a little over 30 bucks, you got a oil change. Now, some of them are going to have arrows or lines, or mine has holes in it for add and full. And right now, I'm up to the top line, hole which means I'm full, good to go. Put that back in, pop your chute back off. We can access the uh, fuel and air filter. Filters I have do not have an arrow on them. I don't know if it matters or not for the flow, but I'm gonna put on the same direction that I took it off. Uh, mine does not have a shut off on the fuel line so I am just use a pair of deal nose vice grips or hose clamps. Just has pinch clamps on it. Some of them might have regular hose clamps. Use a screwdriver on. Sometimes they get over tightened and they cut the fuel line. These are still pretty good, so I'm just going to reuse them. Use rubber gloves. Fuel kind of gets in your pores. Hard to wash off. Any burrito tastes like gas afterwards. Not fun. Match them up, make sure it's going on the same way. The other one came off. Make sure your clamps are back in the same position. Now 
when you start it after you change the fuel filter, it might stall a couple times because you're going to have an air bubble in there. Bam! There's the fuel filter. Take a light, look around, make sure there's no oil dripping out of the drain plug. Check your oil filter, fuel filter, nothing dripping. Kind of rub along the bottom, make sure there's no drips on your fingers. Nice and dry. Good. Mine has a chute on it. We're going to throw a spark plug in it. If it doesn't have a chute, then I guess it'll be a little quicker. It's kind of a nice setup. It only has one wing nut. Pops right off. I always take a pair of pliers to get the uh, spark plug boot off. Might still be a little warm. And some twist it back and forth so it's not, in case it is stuck, you're not pulling the inside tip off the plug wire. I like to take an air nozzle and blow around a spark plug before I pull it off. I don't want anything getting back in the cylinder. Um, if you don't have an air compressor you can use that dust spray you use for your computer anything like that just to get it out of there. Any grass or dirt, sand. This takes a bigger spark plug so it's a 13 16 uh, They do make regular spark plug sockets that have rubber on the inside of the socket to keep you from cracking when you're taking out or putting them in. Some people can check them and clean them and check the gap on your plugs and reuse them but for the price I paid you got it out might as well put the new one in. See this one ain't too bad but it's still a little burnt. Got a new one we'll just put a new one in. You can see on them spark plugs, they have a washer on them. That washer compresses. So once you start to feel that compress, you want to stop tightening it. You don't want to over tighten that. Same thing, that spark plug base is metal. And the cylinder head is aluminum, where you can damage it. You want to check the gap on them. This one is 30. You can Google it, or if you have your owner's manual, tell you in there. Oh, you run it down until it seats. And you just want to tighten until you feel that washer compress. Before I put the boot on, I like to put a little dielectric grease on. Um, you don't have to ever worry about spark traveling around or losing spark or shorting out if it's damp or raining. Plus, if you don't change your spark plug often, it gets pretty dry, gets stuck, and then you end up damaging the spark plug wire when you pull it off. Every pliers again, and just kind of twist to make sure that's snapped into place. You'll hear a click. like that spark plugs change
All right, let's do that air filter. Just has two nuts on top that actually stay in the cover. About a quarter of a turn, you'll feel them pop. Ooh, look at that. Well, these filters do have a foam wrap around them. You can just take them off, blow it off, and clean it. Um, maybe in the middle of the season you can do it if it's real dusty or grass is real dry. But for the price, I'll just replace the whole thing. Wipe it down, make sure you got no debris. Nothing gonna fall in the carburetor. Now I like to put a layer of grease to seal that filter with the base. Um, you don't want a gap underneath, you don't want to suck in any dirt or anything in. You don't have wheel bearing grease or you can use Vaseline, just as fine. Just a little coat on the bottom. Just get that thing to seal. You don't know where these filters come from, how flush they are, how tight of a fit they are. Better safe than sorry. It's not going to hurt anything. Got these ones on. It's pretty easy. You can only go one way. Make sure it's seated down there tight. Put your cover on, bam, you're done. Well, if this is enjoyable, please hit like, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.